the whole the whole idea was um, I was having a birthday party in 2012, and I was going to do a jam, just an unplugged jam in a pub with some friends who were visiting from Argentina from the band Skiltron. Um, and they said, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll play a few Skyclad Unplugged and we'll get completely drunk and make a party. And then that turned into, within about three weeks, uh, the guy saying, oh, we'll put a band together and do a 45 or a 50 minute set of old classic Skyclad songs. And then we ended up with people, or friends I know in bands when I invited them to the party, they said, can we play as well? And within about six weeks, it had uh, all altered from being a birthday party jam to an, an all-day festival in the Nottingham Irish Centre. With we, I think we had ten bands, and we even had an acoustic stage downstairs where three people played in between the heavy bands upstairs. Um, and we, we did the whole thing. It was all free to get in. All the bands and everybody worked there for free. And the whole thing was to collect money for Cancer Research UK. Um, Caitlin approached me, the, the promoter of, from Zandon, and said, would you like to do this again in the future as, you know, for, for fun, do some Skyclad songs and we get some more bands and you can collect for your charity. And I said, yes, yes, I would absolutely love to. And that's kind of how all this strange, strange little event came about. It was a collective thing. I mean, I've um, I've been friends with the band Elven King for what forever, you know, fifteen years or something. I've known them, and um, and I played with them last year. I went out to uh, to Moscow in Russia and played with them a, a set of Skyclad songs. It was really good fun, and uh, we had a great time out there. And then last December we played at the Eindhoven Metal Meeting in in Holland, and that was really good fun as well. So. Uh, so yeah, yeah. But but the the, the bands. I mean, uh, I, I, the the Exuma guys. They were booked by by Kate, Kate the promoter, and the Empire guys. I think um, I think Kate knows Tony and Jeff and approached them, and they said, yeah, obviously we'd we'd, we'd love to do it. We'd love to play with the, the crazy midget and uh, and all for a worthy cause for cancer research. Well, what, what we planned um, was to, you know, that we planned for my um, my friends are in a band called Raven's Creed, a kind of brutal death metal band, they're very good and very nice guys. Uh, they were meant to be the first band on. Um, unfortunately, um, when was it, two days ago, we got an e the, um, the drummer from the band got an email from their singer, Al, is is Syrian, and he was visit visiting his family in Syria and something happened, some kind of uh, uprising in the area where he lives and he was basically um, stuck on the, the Syrian-Turkish border and trying to get his family out of Syria and into Turkey so they couldn't make it so we had second-rate angels turned up yesterday uh, the, the Exuma guys, they were, they were always on the bill for all the four shows uh, no, sorry, for the two shows and the Empire of Evil guys were our special guests and the plan was for Elven King to come and do a 45 minute set of their, their you know, melodic folk rock, folk metal. And then I was going to get up with them and do a 45 or a 50 minute set of, of, of old classic Skyclass songs. Um, the problem sort of arose, really, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, um, the Elven King's agency, All Access Entertainment, uh, Elven King wanted half of their money up front for the shows, which is fair enough, and we transferred that over to their booking agent about three weeks ago. On Friday, we got an email Friday evening from All Access Entertainment uh, saying that unless they received a 100% of payment up front for the shows, that Elven King would not be getting on the aeroplane. And I'm sorry, but you can't get any money out of a venue for ticket sales until you've played the show. They had half the fee, which is a, quite a reasonable demand, I think. You know, my, my mother paid some of her personal money, some of her savings, so, you know, these guys could travel over. And then all of a sudden, you know, with, with no real explanation from the band, who, who have, you know, been my friends. You know, I think of these guys as friends. I've known them for 14, 15 years. 
um, they decided that they weren't coming. So thankfully, we've got the Exuma guys and these great dudes from Empire of Evil have, have stepped in and saved the day. Um, it, it's just a shame, really, because I'm, you know, I've been doing uh, Countess Bathory and black metal, the old. Venom classics with, with these guys, and um, if I'd known three weeks ago that Elven King weren't coming, I'd have got out my old Venom collection and got the lyric sheet out and learned some more songs to do with these guys because it was really, it was really good fun. But you know, we, don't, we, don't, we only officially found out on Monday, uh, two days ago, that the Elven King weren't coming, which is a real shame. It's a real shame for all the people who've come along. I know I'm, I'm very disappointed, and the only positive thing I can say is we've got, you know, the guys from Exuma and the guys from Empire of Evil and all the other support bands who've stepped in who've got the full metal attitude, which is what, it, what it's all about, really. You know, I think when you book to play a show, if at all possible, you turn up and play the show, don't you? Because at the end of the day, it's the fans that matter. You know, they work hard to buy a ticket. We've tried to keep the ticket prices as cheap as possible, so we're gonna, you know, so we can ask people to make a donation, a couple of pounds or euros or whatever, to Cancer Research UK. A normal person, it, yes, it would kill the motivation and I would give up, but I'm not a normal person. I'm a, you cut me in half and it says metal on the inside. So I don't know how yet. I'm just trying to get these get these shows done and make them into the best they can be together with these great guys. And then maybe I'll put a band together and do some Sky Clad songs at a, at a date in the future. It's, it's a bit early to say though yet, you see, that's the only thing. written a lot of new music, me and my guitarist over here, Jacqueline. Uh, we've got a lot of new music written for the clandestine. Um, the problem is really we have, no, we have no record deal and no management or anything, so finding a way to release that and get it recorded is a bit of a problem. But we've got the ideas, you know, it's just diffi difficult in this economic market to actually make any, you know, not that we want to make money, but making music costs money to, to record it and to do a good job. And, and sadly, money is, a, is one of the things we don't have any of at the moment. In, in a way, I, I kind of self-released it. Um, it was released by Lime Records, but I think three weeks after the CD was released, um, the distribution company Pinnacle went bankrupt. So really the CD has, has never properly been released. You know, I've, I've sold a few through the website and uh, I, think, I think Lime Records sold a few but they never received the money for that because when Pinnacle went bankrupt it took all the money with it. So that was a big, big bullshit really. Um, I'm currently talking with um, Guido, the boss of Hammerheart Records in Holland and I think he wants to, to re release it properly maybe in the middle of the year so I'm looking forward to that because it's a shame it's a really good CD I think the video is one of the most unique metal videos ever done it's completely different to anything else it's like a mini movie um, for the song a beautiful start to the end of the world and I think it would be good if it got released so you know people who want to actually buy it and the, the artwork is amazing, I think, with the, some of the artwork on it. Um, it would be nice if it was available for people to buy. It was, it was just basically people who, who volunteered to help out and make it happen. You know, we, we, all, we all worked together with a lot of different people. I mean, all, all the keyboards were done by Les Smith, who plays with Anathema and played with Ship of Fools, you know, Les is a great guy and a great musician. Uh, I mean, we had a lot of people really all collaborating on it. It was a bit of a kind of, um, oh, a bit kind of a musical experiment really, and, and that's what we're planning to do in the future with the new clandestine material. It's just finding a way to, I mean, to be honest, if we can find a way to release, really release, the last CD, the, in the ending CD, we will maybe then get some money in so we can record the next recordings. That's what I'd like to do.
because we have some great ideas. It might be even better than what is on that uh, previous CD. We need to find a way to be able to record them properly, to make sure we have a, a way to release it and the distribution, to make sure that it gets out there to people. I mean, li lyrically, I was when I was growing up, I I, I had a very um, uh, eclectic taste in music. I was I liked you know. Uh, Venom, Venom and Slayer and Merciful Fate. I also like uh, Marillion and Jethro Tull and Kate Bush and all kinds of, you know, really, really traditional music, classical music. So I've got had a lot of influences really on what I've done, I think. I like the, um, the Sky Club album, Prince of the Poverty Line. Because it's, it's, you know, basically it's me singing about all the things we can see that are really still relevant in the world today. The rich people who are only bothered about money, and the bankers who are just greedy, who, you know, they, they, they're quite happy to watch people starve to death while they just take all the money and steal from everybody. And I think it's time that the people realise what's, what's happening in the world, which they are doing slowly. With the internet, I think, and the, the you know, communicating with, with people and learning ideas, people can see what the politicians and the business people are doing that's wrong in the world. It's destroying the environment, the planet on which we live, and it's also ruining people's lives just to make a few people very rich. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of what we did at the time because we, you know, we never really made a living off it. Like, who, who does off music? I mean, the, the, re the reason why it's taken me so long to, to release anything new now is because well, there is really no such thing as a record label as there were before. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not a rich guy. I run my own little t-shirt printing business for my day job. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to do it. But I think that's just what we did for the line because we were you know, we were constantly working, we were on tour, or at the studio, recording, it was very busy. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm getting a bit older now, I don't think I can handle touring like that for three or four months, and I don't every day. Um, but I'd still be like to be, I, I would like to have a home studio where I could actually record and, and make my own music and then everything would be cool. The problem is I live in a small house with neighbours that don't like loud metal music. You know, so uh, there, there's certain things you can record at home and you get those, but it's impossible to do, you know, recordings with a, with a real drum kit and things like that. You know, it all costs money, which is something, sadly, I don't have any of at the moment. I haven't really heard anything from them in absolutely ages. I mean, there, there are a lot of reasons why I left that band, you can imagine, to a band that I sort of named and thought of and worked together with for whatever 11 years or something there are a lot of good reasons for me leaving that band um, to be honest with you I've not heard any of the new stuff I don't listen to it not honestly I've not heard any of it so I can't really comment they're all good musicians so I'm sure it's very good I would really, really like, to, I'm, I'm really happy with the way the clandestine in the big ending CD came out. I've got enough material as rough demos and lyrics written on pieces of paper to do another release. But I need really a way to actually do this, either a record label or somebody to give me whatever, some studio time. So we can work on the ideas and take those, take the ideas that we, we began working with on the first clandestine EP, I'd like to find a way to take those even further and try and do something that's kind of melodic and, and weird and original, but also heavy. Cool. Thank you. Horns ablaze. Thank you, sir.